Hey there, welcome to your instructional video for uh, Boone and Daisy and the Leave It command. So you have seen uh, an earlier video of me working with uh, the girls doing Leave It, teaching them what it means, and they've actually both, um, Boone especially, has really uh, developed over the course of the day camp. But you must practice it anyway, because as I've said in other videos, this area and I represent structure and routine. And when you get home, your timing is not going to be as good as mine. I do this all the time. <laughs> so you're going to find yourself going, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. That's fine. Be patient with yourself, but understand this, that we want to use the leave it command in a way that is going to connect with Boone's brain. That may vary from time to time. So for example, Let's say you have a human, this is my human, and here comes Boone coming to greet this human, off leash, let's assume, right? She, they're in your house. You want to be able to give her a leave it command before she gets to them, before her excitement explodes right up next to them, right? So her excitement is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it's boom. So you wanna to try to give the leave it command, and any command really, before the excitement starts getting enormous. Now, maybe you don't see it coming. Maybe somebody walked in and you're unaware. So you don't, you don't get to tell her leave it until her excitement's already getting big. Fine. But what that means is that there's a very strong chance that if you say leave it, she's not going to hear you. Because when she gets to this level of excitement, her brain is going so fast. So if you have, if you didn't have the uh, luxury or ability or opportunity to get her early on, then you need to walk in front of that person and back her up before you say, leave it again. Don't keep saying it. If you've said it once and she hasn't paid any attention, then you know it's time to get in and use spatial pressure. That's part of what this camp is about. This camp gives her the understanding and starts to build low level compliance. That's what we have time to do here. Now it's about how do you execute and start practicing it and utilizing it in uh, the real world. So we know beyond a doubt that when we say leave it to her, if her brain hasn't spun out of control, she knows it, comprehends it and complies with it. But if her brain is too excited, then you gotta get in there back her up, okay? So this, what I'm about to show you is the basic practice. There are a million other ways to practice. Let me adjust the camera here. There are a million other ways to practice. One of the best ones is when she's playing with uh, Daisy. You can get in front of one dog or another dog. It might be easier if there are two of you doing it. And you can own them and tell them to leave it and stop them from playing. That's a terrific way to practice because there's so much excitement and there's there are two different um, energies going on. But for now, as with everything else, we start with the basics, right? We have something she really wants. This is a beef lung. And she's, well, you can see her paws over there. Let me see if I can adjust. Now, remember, when we are working on strengthening her understanding and compliance, we are always using spatial pressure to initiate the leave it command, as you're gonna see me do. Now, when I get low with this thing, if she starts to move on me, I will back her up before I drop it. If uh, she's still spacious right now, I'll drop it and, uh, and then say leave it. It depends on the situation. But what I do know is that when I have something really good and tasty, I am going to make sure she's back a little bit because this dog is uh, uh, has the speed of a rattlesnake and she's a snatcher. So I'm always going to make sure she is back before I surrender something. Now, here's the other thing. When I back her up, I say leave it and then maybe once more. I am now requiring her to give space to my thing. She must give space. And I will thereafter use the leave it judiciously. But when she gives space, here's an important thing. I must have a marker in my brain that says to me, that's my invisible barrier. Because if I don't have a marker, then I don't have complete clarity. If I don't have complete clarity, she does not get clear signals from me. So I want to have a marker in my own brain that tells me she's getting too close. 
And when she gets close to that marker, that's when I say leave it. So she starts to understand almost like an invisible fence. So this, I think you can see this pink toy. That is going to be my marker. I'm not sure how this will come off on camera, but you can see it right here. This thing, leave it. So let's, oh, you know what? Here's a better one. Sorry, I should have had this plan. The milk jug. This milk jug full of water is my marker. Okay, so here we go, ready? Let her know I have it. Let's see, leave it. I can use my hands. I push her behind. A little spatial pressure to punctuate because she is staring intensely at my beef lung. So you see where she is in relation to the milk jug. She's about a foot or so behind it. I always like for dogs to stay at least a foot or so behind. Now, if she starts to stare at it, which right now she's watching me, which is great. If she starts to stare at it, I will tell her the command again. I am walking around. This is proofing. You'll remember this. So she's doing great. It's also first thing in the morning, so I might have gotten her at a deliciously tired time. Now, that's going beautifully. I'm going to add some challenge by moving it closer. Now her eyes are a little more fixed. Ah, there we go. She's looking at me again. I was expecting a little more push. Okay. So what I'm going to do then is add some challenge. These, ah, leave it. She crossed my barrier. She crossed my barrier because she was interested in what I'm holding, which is a bag of bully slices, just like a bully stick. I don't care which one she was interested in. She was crossing my barrier, so I said, leave it, and she backed up. So bully stick, I'm just adding excitement. Now she's staring more. Leave it. So, she, oh, okay, she looked up at me. But if I think that she, and she's starting to, she's focusing a little more on this bully stick. If I think she's having evil thoughts, I don't wait for her to dash. I can walk over and give her a little spatial pressure, back her up just a hitch. Don't care about her being on the bed. Don't care about her sitting. Don't even care. This is lovely that she's laying down, but I'm not that interested in that because she can go from that position to, uh, a rocket in a hot minute. Cheese, uh, string cheese. So the idea here is, is that I am trying to tempt and challenge. Like I said, if I start feeling, if she is, she right now her eyes are back up on me, but if she were to start staring down any of these things, or if I got the feeling that she wasn't even noticing me, I would say the word again. Because this is about connecting with her brain, not her body. This is not some kind of verbal leash. This is mental direction. I'm going to move behind her so I wouldn't have a prayer of stopping her, physically speaking. And there you go. So this is the power of spatial pressure. Now, let's just make it a little bit more tempting. Here's my jug. That's my invisible line. Moving closer. Here, in fact, I'll take all of these out. There we go. Closer, the more uh, tempting. Now, sh leave it. See the nose reaching out? Leave it. So I don't have any place where I can back her up. So I just walked up to her and leaned over her. That is spatial pressure. But you see the nose working now? Let me see if she softens up. Yeah, she's softening up a little bit. Good. So I always use spatial pressure to punctuate, leave it. And you're going to see in another uh, video, wait, the wait command, that... Um, that I use it in a very, very similar fashion, almost exactly the same. 
So when we are done with this exercise, I'll pick everything up. She will automatically know that I don't care anymore where she goes. Yep, there you go. And then I will say, what a good girl, and give her a piece of the treat. Okay, so there you go. I will um, create an addendum that has some real life when I get the girls playing. I'll make a video of that um, in a special addition to this.